I'm a god, I'm indestructible. <laughs> I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston, I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I think Mike Tyson was the greatest freak that's ever existed. After some fight, I ran Barkley. The guy asked him, said, so if you weren't fighting, what would you be doing? He said, I'd be robbing your house right now. <laughs> you know? And no one's serious. The guys who fight were put on this earth if yeah. they weren't fighting they'd get some shit up somewhere <laughs> boxing and a lot of other combat sports has taken people out of the streets me and mike tyson have talked about this for hours for hours about it he, he talks about what he would have been doing if he first of all he didn't hook up with cuss and he didn't go up there and he didn't he said cuss broke me down as a fucking human being and then built me back up and he said, I honestly truly believe that me and him were put together because he's the only one that could have fucking done it. Because let me tell you what I would have been doing if I didn't meet Cuss and I didn't get into boxing. Yeah, he had so much respect for that guy as a trainer and so much respect for him as a father figure that it like inspired him to, to greatness. It yep. inspired him to focus 100% on pleasing that guy because that was the first guy to really show him love and to really show him respect and to have, have faith in him. And then under him, all of a sudden, all these great things are happening, all the success is happening. I was coming to destroy and win the heavyweight championship of the world, which I'd done. And I'd like to dedicate my fight to my great guardian, Customato. And I'm, I'm sure he's up there and he's looking and he's talking to all the great fighters and saying his boy did it. And he talked about how much fucking anger he had inside yeah. of him at that time. I was a much older person, he was a much younger person. Not only that, he was accustomed to being in the company of different types of people. And as a result, he didn't know how I would accept or be receptive to him because of that. His character had to be developed and strengthened. He had to learn discipline. The strengthening of character has been, been a slow process because the rules that he's learned to live by, or had learned to live by, but not those generally accepted by society. It was a, a dog eat dog affair. Well, Cuss, she had, she had pretty much signed me, willed me over, like signed me over to Cuss before she died. What's that feeling like? Excuse me? What's that feeling like? Your mom, who you had known, even though she was abusive, and it hit you with a bunch of stuff. And just kind of said, take him, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I wanted to show the world who I was. Well, you watch those combinations he throws when he's training with Cuss. There's a video of him. I think it's, I don't know if it's Kevin Rooney or Teddy Atlas or who's working with him, but he's throwing off combinations on the bag, and he's probably like 18 years old. And it's like, and you're just watching these Sick. ridiculous, Sick. ruthless, violent combinations like no one has ever thrown before. I don't give a fuck about Joe Lewis. Muhammad Ali was the greatest, uh, yes, a, a great cultural figure, a great boxer for his era i think mike tyson was the greatest freak that's ever existed i, I don't agree, think there's man. ever been anybody like that i agree the marvis frazier fight you remember that Yo, fight fuck yeah jesus christ I know. that was as close to a murder as you could watch on television <laughs> Dude, when you start to watch the old fights of tyson coming Ooh. up there's guys that he just fucking, fucking murder murder right? frank bruno fight oh, just clubbed and, him and when i was first coming up in boxing right there was a gym that they used to shut the place down for mike when mike would come in so he'd come in and train there'd be fucking 50 brand new cars that would pull in the fucking park it was great <laughs> dude it was crazy the aura that surrounded tyson at that time and just all the crazy shit that went on but he had tigers everlast made a special bag for him so they'd come in and take down the bags in the fucking gym, the real bags, and they'd put up these special bags that were fucking this big. They were just massive. You couldn't put your arms around them, right? When he would hit a regular fucking bag that you would buy, you know when you break a firecracker in half? That's what the fucking bag would look like when he would hit it. The fucking thing would snap in half this way and come back this way. The fucking power that this guy had when he punched, you had to be there to, like you said, yeah. the combination you see him throwing on the bag. And, and just if when you saw it in person, you were just like, "What the God, fuck?" I would love to see that. You just call me today, but the, every time he asked me to do him a favor, I'm like, "Dude, I do anything." For Isn't it me. weird when Mike Tyson I, calls yeah. you? Yeah. Do you look at your phone and go, "Holy yeah. shit, Mike Tyson's calling yeah. you"? I fucking dude, Tyson is my favorite all time. You know, I fucking love Mike Tyson. Yeah, I, he's one of my favorite all time fighters as well. There was uh, nothing like a Tyson fight. Yeah, exactly. Was, they were different. They were different experiences. So true. You know, when you saw him fight somebody, like Jesus Christ, How what about, is Tony Tubbs gonna do to him? 
him. How about you know? when you're watching? I don't give a fuck if you're there live, which I was very lucky that I was able to do that. You know, go to a few Mike Tyson fights live when he fought. Or if you were sitting at home watching TV, as soon as they fucking showed him on camera walking out, you just yeah. fucking got the goosebumps and yeah. went, oh my he God. He was so terrifying. I love that scene in, in the movie Tyson where he talks about what's going through his mind. All his insecurities go away by the time he gets to the ring. I'm a god. I'm indestructible. When you watch a Tyson documentary, yeah. it's fucking awesome. You just, yeah. you're in awe. Yeah, it was a completely different cultural experience than like the Muhammad Ali era must have been. Because yep. the Muhammad Ali thing was like, Muhammad Ali was di different because he was so much more admirable as a human being. Like what he did was like, during the Vietnam War, he said, you know what, man? Why are we going to war? Why are you sending me to war? Well, I don't want to kill no Viet Cong. Right. No Viet Cong never did anything. And then everybody in America was like yeah what the fuck is going on what are you doing and then they took his i mean they made a martyr out of him by taking his career away for three yeah. years tell me champ would you have been prepared to go into the army if it hadn't I've been, been for the vietnam war no under no conditions do we take part in wars and take lives of other humans so when you see like Muhammad Ali, you see a different thing. You see like a troubled time, the Nixon administration and people were down on the government and the Vietnam War was so unpopular. When you see Mike Tyson, you just saw destruction. It was a completely different experience. It's like he was like Sonny Liston on meth. Yep. It was like Sonny Liston, but moving 100 miles an hour. And there was no Muhammad Ali to stop him. There was no Muhammad Ali to, you know, no young brash kid to dethrone him with boxing. You know, I always talk about when, when, when I'm talking about the UFC to people who really don't understand fighting and the sport and stuff. But the, So the way that I usually break it down for them is I say, listen, you look at the NFL, how big the NFL is, been trying to go over here, go over there. Cricket's big over there, never big over here. Fighting crosses all cultural mm. language barriers and yeah. shit. No matter what color you are, what country you come from, what language you speak, we're human beings and fighting's in our fucking DNA. When you really think about fucking all the most famous guys, think about Michael Jordan, how big he is. You know? Think about who are really fucking well-known everywhere, all over the fucking planet, and worshipped. Mm -hmm. Guys like fucking Tyson. You, you know, know what I mean? Weird? Muhammad Ali. You know Bruce weird? Lee. Listen, David, David's known for the father of Israel. He created Israel, right? What yeah. do you think you know David for? What is he known for? He created the whole nation, but what is he known for? Killing Goliath. Yes. He's done so many great things. <laughs> but only thing he's known for, if you're not a scholar, really, the only thing you know David for is killing Goliath. A fight. Yeah. He's known for a fight. He made a he he created a whole nation, but he's known for a fight. Yeah, he killed a big guy with a rock. Y yeah. Right? Slingshot. And then he chopped his yeah. head off. Yeah. Yeah, there's always throughout history there's been the best fighter. And they, they, they were one of the most revered people in society. Listen, today in 2020. Someone told me that they said you could be you could work in Tesla, the head the head corporation in Tesla. All your um high tech geeks, right? If a fight goes down in the in the lobby, the whole everybody's left the room, they're watching the fight. It's just that's what fight does is the animal yeah. instincts in us. Yeah, somebody never had a fight in their life. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he never had a fight. Yeah, get him, get him.